So let's say we had an image of the Andromeda galaxy, right? We went outside, took a few exposures, stacked them together, and now we have our supposedly beautiful image. So then we go to process it, well, it looks very noisy, it looks smeared, and well, it just doesn't look that great. So how do we fix that? Well, first of all, I would recommend if you didn't get very good data, if you have light polluted skies, if you have a uh, little detail in your image, you didn't take many exposures, you only took maybe an hour in a Bortle 7, I would definitely recommend not stretching your image to its maximum just because those noise particles are going to be pulled out of the image drastically. And this is the main problem I used to have is I would overstretch my images just because I think the details there. But that's not what makes the image great. It's not how much details in it. It's the whole picture as a whole, if that makes sense. So you want the whole entire picture to look good. You don't just want that little nebulosity got pulled out of near Orion, the little uh, dust regions near it. You want that whole entire picture to look like a masterpiece. That is the main goal setting for my images today. What you want to do is you want to barely stretch your image and then not use noise reduction rather than oh, way over stretching your images and then use a ton of noise reduction on it. It's just not, it's not going to look real, it's going to look fake, and it's not going to look very good up to so what you want. Another thing I would recommend is not to clip the black point. You'll lose so much detail and also the sky is not completely black so that it makes it kind of unnatural. The sky is actually has a slight gray hue so you want to make it sure that it's kind of gray. And you also don't want to hit the line that's across your histogram in Photoshop. You want to actually go right before you hit the line of the histogram peak. You don't want to actually go to the histogram. You don't even want to go to the line starting the histogram and then when it goes up. You want to go before that line if that makes any sense. The next tip I would recommend to do is make sure you image as much as possible. Now this means probably all night or multiple nights because in a Bortle 7 sky like mine, I've imaged only for like an hour and I've always got crappy images. They never ever turned out good until I started imaging for like six hours a night and you know, leaving it all night to image, then it turned out great. Now, I just will let you know, um, I actually, as a beginner astrophotographer, I really failed in all night imaging because halfway through the night, my images started trailing. And the main cause for this is because I forgot to do Meridian Flip. Meridian Flip is basically when you flip the telescope 180 degrees, so that way the equipment's not bumping into there, and you can just flip it 180 degrees so it can keep going without bumping into the side of the mount, so that way your camera doesn't bump into it and break it. So just a tip there, please, do a meridian flip if you're doing it all night. This is definitely required. Another tip I recommend doing is do not use a Barlow at whatsoever on your telescope or lens. Do not use a Barlow just because you'll lose that light and you will definitely get less detail. Even though it may seem tempting because you get higher resolutions, you're definitely going to lose a ton of detail. Because when you lose detail, obviously, you know, you don't get as good of an image, you probably get noisier images too. Another thing I cannot stress enough about is definitely go to a dark site if you have one near you. This is because a dark site will seriously help with those details and you can easily pull out things without having to extract light pollution, deal with vignetting and stuff like that. Not as much anyway. But the thing about dark sites is one hour in a dark site equals 10 hours or more in a light polluted site. Another thing I recommend doing if you're a more experienced astrophotographer is I would recommend definitely using narrowband filters. These will really help with those light pollution skies and it will help you so much more in terms of nebulosity. It won't work well in galaxies unless you're using HA on Andromeda or Triangulum, but um, yeah, you definitely get some more amazing results with narrowband filters than you would any day with, you know, just RGB color. For those of you struggling with vignetting, I would definitely recommend checking out getting a two inch thread. This is the reason why I had to get a two inch thread is because my vignetting was so severe around the edges that I was like, what the heck is going on? Especially if you have an APS-C size DSLR with a 1.25 inch thread, you definitely need a two inch thread. That way you can get that uh, less vignetting. I had no vignetting whatsoever once I got a two inch thread. Especially if you have a full frame camera, it's a must. You must have a two inch thread or else you're not gonna get anything out of it. That's good because it's all gonna be black at the edges. No stars, no nothing. Definitely minimize your stars because you get so much more detail in the actual image you want to pull out, the actual object you're photographing. So definitely try to minimize those stars so they don't look bulky. Now I am still learning every day, so I am not the expert here, but hopefully you learned some things from this video that was useful today. Anyways, until next time, clear skies.